Hello, guys, and welcome on in to No Filter Book Club. What's going on today? We are back on track, breaking down Holly Madison's book, Down the Rabbit Hole. We have a lot to recap today. We are officially at the start of The Girls Next Door. We get into how Kendra Wilkinson joined The Girls Next Door. Not just Girls Next Door, but how she ended up becoming one of Hef's girlfriends. Holly Madison is making some accusations about Kendra. She has a lot of very unpleasant things to say about Kendra. And some new tea on the mansion and on Hef and how Girls Next Door came to be and how it affected their lives at the mansion. So I hope you are ready for it because we got a lot to break down. Hi, Carrie. Hello, hello, hello. Eric F., what's going on? Hi, Coffee Buzz. Um, hi, Zach Pack. Um, no coffee buzz i do not drive a cute mini cooper um but i'm i'm glad i give off that energy but i don't i definitely don't drive a mini cooper i can tell you that fresh face yes alicia we are fresh face fresh from seeing dr jen hi guys hi tones hi alicia hi kelly jim hi Charmin bb what's up mary stout a reef is in the house. Miss Loopy Lori's here. Welcome on in, guys. Welcome on in. I'll give you a second to trickle on in. Hi, Melissa G. What's up? All right. Are we ready for No Filter Book Club tonight? Like I said, we have some juicy new revelations. Holly Madison is coming out swinging. And she's got some new accusations to make. Ooh, what did you have done at Dr. Jen? Um, it's on the Instagram account, but it was really just a touch up of, I got a, a, a tox touch up with some Juvo. Got some Juvo put in here and here and here. Oh my God. The nose Botox, the nose Juvo. <sighs> just like contours the nose. It makes you feel good. And then I got my mouth and my chin done. So there's that. Welcome on, guys. Okay, let's dive in, shall we? Kicking it off for tonight, we're going to be breaking down chapter seven, eight, and nine from Holly Madison's book, Down the Rabbit Hole. Kicking things off with chapter seven. So this chapter is about how Kendra became a Playboy bunny. So apparently there were some spots that were about to open up amongst Hef's girlfriends. So Holly and Bridget took it upon themselves to see if they can try and help select who the new girl was going to be. They found a stack of photos for girls that were auditioning to become uh, some of the painted ladies they have at the mansion parties. And so I guess they were having an upcoming mansion party. Painted ladies were obviously, you know, the girls that are not wearing any clothes, but they're fully painted. So they're technically covered up but not but not really covered up. Anyway, they went through them to see if they can find who could be one of the replacement girlfriends. And they really liked a woman named Tiffany, who was very sweet, seemed very smart. She was a little curvy and they liked her because she had this like ash blonde hair to her. And so they felt like that just made her a little bit more of like a real relatable bitch. And half, however, was like, nah, I'm more interested in Kendra, who was 19 at the time. But Holly describes Kendra as the most plastic and platinum of the bunch. Which, what's wrong with being a little plastic and platinum, Holly? Hello? It's okay if you're fake on the outside, if you're real on the inside. Even though apparently Kendra was fake on the outside and fake on the inside as well. And then we have Nicole, who is the third option of the bunch, who Holly says wasn't even close to being Hef's type because she was a lot more curvy and she had strawberry blonde hair and Hef likes the bleached blonde I would definitely fit if I had bigger, if I had tits, I would definitely fit in with Hef's type for sure. Um, so then Holly then calls out Kendra's recollection of joining the girlfriend entourage, the girlfriend clan, because I guess apparently in Kendra's book, she has a very different story of how she ended up coming into the mansion. So Holly calls out her recollection of joining uh, joining the Playboy Mansion in her book, Sliding Into Home, where she says Kendra did not first receive a key to the mansion, as Kendra claimed in her book, before having to go upstairs and do Boom Boom in the Bedroom with Hugh Hefner. So that that's not how it works. You have to do Boom Boom in the Bedroom first, you bang Hef, and then after you bang Hef, then he determines whether or not he likes you. Oh, Adam's joined the live. Hi, Adam. Adam, you always join, and then you get everybody all hyped up, 
And then everyone's like, ah, no, no, no. And then you're distracting from my storytelling, okay? I'm, I'm telling a bedtime story here. Anyway, Kedra in her book claims that Hef gave her the key to the mansion the first night. And then, you know, eventually she ended up making her way into the bedroom. But that she had already won a place in his heart. And Holly's like, no way, Jose, that's not how it works. Thanks, but nah. So she says that Hef never hands out the keys that easily, especially not before a round of boom, boom in the bedroom. So there's that. He didn't seem to care much for Kendra at first, aside from her looks on the outside. She looked great, but she apparently didn't have much of a personality. She was a lot more shy and like less extroverted as we saw on the show. Have did, however, invite Kendra to stay for the weekend because she lived in San Diego. And he's like, well, there's no point in going all the way back to San Diego after one of my parties, probably because he wanted to give her some quaaludes and see if, you know, he was able to open up her gates. And clearly, by the looks of it, definitely was. Hi, Aoko. Hi, Mary. Hi, Sammy. Sean Noel Trout. What's going on? Jay Peterson. Is that a shock? Is Jacques in the house too? Say what? So Holly describes Kendra as not the sharpest tool in this shed. She said that she wasn't very bright, but, you know, she was a much better selection than the current mean girls that were on their way out from the entourage. Kendra eventually made her way to do boom, boom in the bedroom. And then she started to move her way up the ladder. Apparently Kendra lied to half, however, by telling him that she was a college student. When in reality, she was a stripper with a drug addiction. Ooh, Holly is spilling that tea on Kendra. She used to have a drug problem, which ultimately ended up, being why have had such a soft spot in his heart for her because it was like it's okay i'll save you from the streets if you're in recovery then you know you're better off here than out there in san diego and if you're a struggling student i'm willing to help you out but she was actually a stripper with a drug problem i don't know if that's in her book sliding into home but holly is blasting it in down the rabbit hole so another um but she said that once had once Kendra actually moved in, she ended up being the new golden girl. And Hef was like enamored with Kendra because she was like young and she was like a little ditzy and she had real bleach blonde hair and she was just, you know, a hot commodity. So another juicy tidbit Holly reveals is that apparently Hef didn't even own the mansion, which I thought Playboy Mansion owned by Hugh Hefner, like that makes sense, right? Nope. Apparently. Playboy Enterprises owns the Playboy Mansion and Hef had to rent each of the rooms that he and his girlfriends occupied. He paid $25,000 a month for his master suite and the other girls had different rooms depending on like size and location in the mansion. So he paid $25,000 for his room and then Kendra's room was actually the next most expensive at $12,000. Meanwhile, Holly had to bunk in Hef's room because obviously she was main girlfriend number one. And so she's like, all I had was the vanity and it wasn't, she's like, it wasn't all that it was hyped to be. And she wanted out of the mansion or not out of the mansion, but she wanted out of his bedroom so that she can have her own bedroom. But ooh, that's not that strange is you understand how businesses and real estate works. I mean, I guess, Victoria, I don't know why we're coming in a little salty, girl, but, you know, maybe maybe have a slice of orange and we'll sweeten things up. Maybe the tartness and the sweetness will, will balance you out, girl. Um, I was shocked. That may not be shocking to some people in the lives, but I was definitely shocked by that fact. I thought Hef owned all of Playboy. I thought he owned the house. I didn't think he was going to be renting his own house or at least renting them for his girlfriend. Give her an orange. Yeah, I mean, she seems like she knows an orange. I'm just saying, like, hi. Um, yeah, have a slice of orange. Have a Snickers, girl. Have a Snickers. Um, okay, so anyway. The one day half announced that he was doing a pictorial on the painted ladies, which would be featuring Kendra and Tiffany, who is the other girl that was one of the painted ladies. Holly and Bridget were immediately like shooketh by the news because they desperately wanted to land a pictorial. But he was like very hesitant about that. Because if you'll remember from a couple chapters prior, he didn't give his girlfriends spots in the magazine because if he did, he was afraid that they would then take that and, you know, go with the fame that they had gotten or the attention or the money. And they would ultimately leave him because all they really wanted was 
a spot in the magazine. So he didn't really give it to them. So Holly and Bridget were like, this is not okay. The fact that he's giving these painted ladies a spot in the magazine, but they're like, we're not going to let it, we're not going to, you know, be phased by this because he probably just wants us to feel jealous because that's his game. He likes making his girls feel, you know, insecure around him. So they decided the best thing that they can do was just try to make nice with Kendra. So they invited her out and Holly would like help her pick out outfits and would bring her dresses that she could wear ultimately to try and build a better bond with her. Holly re really makes it seem like she went above and beyond to help make Kendra feel welcome. But Kendra was just rude and arrogant and obnoxious and rude to like waiters and Holly couldn't stand her at the beginning. She vividly remembers Kendra coming in one day wearing bright red lipstick. Now, if you'll remember from previous chapters, Holly was scolded for wearing red lipstick because half hates red lipstick. He does not let any of the girls wear red lipstick. And the first time Holly tried to come in and think she was going to change him, he snapped at her and he was he told her she looked cheap and old. Remember that? Or hard. Hard, cheap, and old is what he said she looked like. So she expected to have to pop off on Kendra the same way that he popped off on her, yet he did the exact opposite and he actually praised Kendra and he thought that Kendra looked incredible. And Holly describes this as just another one of his manipulation tactics to pick the girls against each other. And so he was trying to pit the new girl against his main girl, which was Kendra against Holly. And he thought that that would be a great way to keep them insecure and fighting over him. He hates red lipstick, but he really wanted to make Holly feel, you know, insecure in her own skin. And Kendra was, I guess, just allowed to get away with it. So it seems to have worked since there still appears to be some beef between the two of them. Holly accuses Kendra uh, of being completely fake and saying that her entire personality is fake, even her iconic laughter. She said that she thinks that eventually Kendra learned how to convince herself that her laugh is even real, but we all know that her laugh is actually fake. And I was like, ooh, Holly is throwing shots fired. So she says Kendra always loved to be the center of the show. She'd love to be the center of attention. She describes Kendra as annoying, but ultimately seemingly harmless in the end. And that is the conclusion of chapter seven. Um, Char McShane says renting his own room. It doesn't make sense unless it had something to do with tax breaks. Possibly. That's an interesting point. That may be why homegirl was talking about, you know, how we don't understand how real estate works. Um, Siki says, Zach keeps me awake. It's 3.38 a.m. here. So worth it. Well, I'm glad, Siki. I'm definitely glad it is. 639 here in Los Angeles. And I still have a full night ahead of work. I've had a full day and I'll have a full day tomorrow. But listen, I'm gonna have some coffee and I'm gonna power through it. I'm excited. Tomorrow I have Meredith Marks on the podcast. Next week I have Jenny McCarthy on the podcast. It's a good time. Um, Sammy rules the world says Kendra doesn't seem to be a girl's girl. No, it doesn't seem that she was a girl's girl at all, especially from the way Holly described her. Kendra was very, but then again, when Kendra came into the mansion, she was 19 years old. Is anybody really much of a girl's girl at that point, especially when you come into the world of Playboy and you're being conditioned to be competitive with each other? Like, are we really shocked or disappointed in Kendra's behavior given she was 19 years old when she came into this scene? I don't know. You know, Holly was a few years older. She wasn't old by any means. I think she was like early to mid 20s at this point. So she was still, I'm sure even Holly, I don't give Holly, I cut Holly some slack too. Um. Okay, then we get into chapter eight. Lights, camera, action. It is time for the girls next door. Holly said that she was initially apprehensive, but ultimately was just happy for some variety at the mansion. Hef ended up greenlighting a project. And once he greenlights a project, it was full steam ahead. But apparently there were a few different projects that were going on at that time, or at least being shopped around at that time. Everybody wanted to do a reality show on the Playboy Mansion. So she says she was a little reluctant to join the reality TV game because it was still a little, not taboo, but like it wasn't something that people really took all that seriously. And this was pre Kardashians, you know, before the family really popped off. So she said that she was just like, uh, I don't really know if I want to do this, but at least it makes things a little interesting here at the mansion. Right. So Hef ultimately ends up green lighting E to move forward with their project. And she said that it was a lot that it, it was a lot for her to process like good and bad. 
you know, there was a lot for her to take in. She says that they were definitely encouraged to be nude as much as possible because at first, um, obviously she did it, She felt comfortable because she's like, oh, well, they have to blur this. And then eventually she found out that the international markets allowed for nudity on reality TV. And so they were allowed to show it and it helped further extend the Playboy brand. Holly said she was horrified at, uh, at first sight of herself on television, which I think most people would be. You just, you see your mannerisms and you see your angles and you're just like, you are so hypercritical of everything about yourself. And then when you have the internet, that's like, you know. Oh, hi, no one cure Madison 777 said, hi, skinny legend. Thank you for calling me skinny. I don't feel skinny right now. I feel like I've gained like 25 pounds. I know I haven't, but I've been a little like bloated lately. And then yesterday, or the day before, someone told me I have a fat ass for being a skinny boy. And I was like, I don't really know how I feel about that. I'm sure you meant it as a compliment, but I don't know if I'm receiving that as a compliment, but I think I will receive the compliment. Um, and no, I have a nice tushy, but I used to have a flat ass. And so now if I have a fat ass, definitely makes me think. Are you? Did you watch Secrets of Playboy? Not yet, Robin. I will watch it. Once we're done with the book, we'll do a, re we'll do a book club recap of the actual series. Um, thank you, Miss Kristen. So stay tuned for that. Um, Zach, did you watch the documentary? Guys, I haven't watched the documentary yet. I will watch the documentary. I promise I want to get through the book first. I'm, I'm also told that the documentary is a lot to digest, so I might actually break it up into pieces and maybe do pieces of the documentary like over the weeks while we're covering you know covering all of the the book club but anyway holly said that when they were doing the when they were in the initial like casting process she felt like the producers were trying to bait her into saying something negative about hef or the other girls because they were looking for drama she said that everything that came out of her mouth had to be spoken through a filter of what hef would approve of so when these tactics would come up she was always very like cautious of like would have approve of this would have liked this would have not liked this um and she says that there were a few iterations of the playboy mansion reality show that were being shopped around so she didn't really know what was going to come of it until she credits herself with the the concept of girls next door coming to fruition she says that her answers made the producers see that there was more to the girls than meets the eye and so that's why they decided to do a reality show based off of the girls and not necessarily half or the mansion itself. But she says that their roles were all predetermined going into the show that half told them that Kendra's role was, um, she was the one that always wants to have fun. Bridget was the one that wants to have a career. And Holly was told that her role was to be the one that was madly in love with only eyes for half. And all the map the episodes were mapped out in advance. She said that this was mostly due to like a budget thing. They wanted to make sure that they weren't just spending a bunch of extra time and resources on dead end storylines. So they would kind of pre-produce everything well ahead of, you know, it's time. Um, everything had to be pre-approved by Hef though. And Hef apparently had a whole plan as to what he was utilizing this for. And it was ultimately to craft his own image, to gain himself fame, to gain himself re relevancy, and to, you know, continue to keep the magazine popping. So Hef announced to the girls that they were all about to get a cover, which again was his own way of promoting them or promoting the magazine. And he says that, you know, it was something that they were convinced they were, it was his way of, um, I guess, give it like throwing a dog a bone because he tried to convince them that they were never good enough to be in the magazine. Because as you know, he wanted to prevent his girlfriends from getting pictorials and whatnot. So this was kind of his way of like dangling a little piece of fruit in front of them to be like, Ooh, get excited. Cause I'm about to do, do something good for you. But it was all part of his scheme to keep them at the mansion, to feed them with fame as Hef's girlfriends, because then that would be their ultimate role to the world was Hef's girlfriends. And so it kind of continued to condition them to believe that they're only as good as Hef allowed them to be. So the pictorial went well. Holly loved it. She was really excited. She said the amateur models typically received about 25000 for a Playboy shoe. Hef's girlfriends in the past have gotten around 100000 And then celebrities like Denise Richards or Drew Barrymore, when they would do them, they would get around a $1 million mark of a payment, which is interesting considering like Denise Richards and Drew Barrymore posed for Playboy like a long time ago, whereas Lindsay Lohan also received a million dollars, but she posed for Playboy more recently. Um, 
which is interesting because you would think at some point she would have been paid a little bit more considering, you know, times and inflation and all that fun stuff, but whatever. Um, Ultimately, though, Holly, Bridget, and Kendra were only offered the $25,000 rate, which she felt was a little insulting. She's like, well, we're not just some amateur models. We're on a reality show. We're Hef's girlfriends. His private, his prior girlfriends have been paid much more that she just thought it was a bit of a lowball offer for them to only make $25,000. Like Dana Wilkie's classes, $25,000. But what's worse is Hef waived their right to be paid for season one of Girls Next Door. Apparently, their pictorial was their payment. So they didn't even get paid for season one. And they were kind of like bothered by that. Um, Kendra was the first person to bring it up because she was like, I think we should definitely be paid for the show. Like, it doesn't make sense that we're filming this show and we're not making any money off of it. And she said that's when a producer reminded Kendra that they're all replaceable and that they were nothing more than a trophy to complement the real star, which was Hugh Hefner. He was the star. He was the one getting paid. They were just like, you know, this can of no filter wine. It's just here to like aid me, the star which is kind of fucked up if you think about it, to equate them to just kind of being a trophy on the side. So ultimately, when they got a copy of the final magazine with their pictorial in it, they realized that all of the individual shots that they had had um, photographed for, because they each got to pick like their own, hi, have you snapped today? Hello. Um, they all got to pick their, like, their scenes. They got to shoot in their room and got to like tailor the shoot around something that fit their personality, which they were all really excited to see make the magazine. And I thought that would have actually done well in the magazine, but all of those ultimately ended up getting cut out of the shoot. And instead they chose to focus on or to center with this photo with Hef and the girls around him to make him the star instead of them, which also very strange because Holly's like, most men that are buying this magazine don't give a shit to see Hef. They give a shit to see us and they want to fantasize about his girlfriends. One of the other main photos that was featured was uh, a shower scene with Kendra and Holly. And it was originally just supposed to be like a bonus shot, something that, you know, was at the end of the day. And they're like, oh, let's just give this a try. Kendra and Holly in the shower together. So Bridget wasn't in it because she opted out because she had to go take a final exam for one of the classes that she was taking. And she's like, I can't miss this final. And they were like, oh, well, it's fine. This shoot's probably not going to make it or these shower scenes probably aren't going to make it into the magazine anyway so Bridget's like all right well have fun I got to move on I got to go take my exam I can't get out of it or else I'll probably fail the course only to find out that it ended up being one of the main photos used in the pictorial and Bridget was gutted and she says that the portrayal was heavily edited to craft um was heavily edited and crafted to make it look like it was a hard decision for Bridget to not participate in that, but that there were a bunch of like off camera, like conversations with Hef and stuff that ultimately, you know, she was having a hard time with because she really wanted the Pictoria more than Kendra or Holly. And she was the most excited about being featured in the magazine only to be cut out from like one of the main shots, which she was really disappointed in. Then E eventually debuted Girls Next Door. This was all during filming. And then eventually the show came out and it debuted to 1 million viewers. And then the network immediately upped them from 15 or sorry, from eight episodes to 15 episodes. So the show was a real hit. It's one of their biggest hits in the past three years. And that they were like the busty three musketeers and people loved it. And Holly loved it. She said that, you know, the three of them made that show, their chemistry and their personalities were the anchors on that show. And it wouldn't have been successful with any other three playboy playmates or playboy bunnies. And so she really gives herself a pat on the back. Then we get into chapter nine, which is the final chapter we'll be breaking down tonight. And this talks about how life at the mansion was now starting to get better now that they had this reality show and it gave them a sense of purpose. It gave them, I don't know, just something to kind of work on and look forward to other than being Hef's girlfriends. So they didn't really have to sleep with him anymore or go clubbing with him because now the show was taking up so much of their time and they were so busy and Hef was so busy that he didn't really care. He didn't need the boom boom in the bedroom as, as much anymore. And they didn't need to go out and party to be seen because now they're being seen by millions each week. 
So as the show took off, the girls started to take off. They got a second pictorial. And even the relationships amongst the trio was starting to get better. They were starting to get along a lot more because they were becoming a united front. And um, they were even allowed to travel a lot more because originally Hef didn't really want them to travel, but now he had to live up to like this luxurious lifestyle of what the Playboy Mansion is. Hot girls and hot vacations and all that good stuff. So they got to live and travel in style. And Holly's like, I loved it. We got to like see the world because they all came from small towns. So to them, it really wasn't much of a, um, they didn't get to travel very much. So this was something that was exciting for them. But the higher they climbed, the more on head on edge, Holly said that she started to become because she knew that the act that they were playing was all a big farce and that the, there really wasn't this camaraderie between the girls and there really wasn't this love for half. And she didn't really love half as much as she was forced to kind of, you know, portray on the show. And she even says that even though that she was kind of like believed that she was in love with half and believed that she wanted to be his girlfriend and kind of would excuse and, you know, believe all of his gaslighting. But around the time that the show was peaking, I guess that's also when Ryan Seacrest came into the network. We know he's the one that brought in the Kardashians or keeping up with Kardashians rather. And half says that the network would have never been able to afford Ryan if it weren't for the success of girls next door. So half was definitely patting himself on the back. And one of the episodes that the girls loved the most were their birthday episodes, but filming schedules rarely happened around Holly's birthday. So when it came time for her to have her birthday episode, she was super stoked. And she was like, just falling in love with the process of being on a reality show. One thing, though, that was never allowed on the show was drama. Hef did not want any drama, even though he was like a real life drama king and he liked to keep the girls fighting over him behind the scenes. When cameras were on, he only wanted a good, happy family on the show. No drama. So Holly eventually, um, well, I guess they kind of had to hide the drama, but there was a, a storyline where she became a photo intern and she said that she loved that, but initially Hef wouldn't allow her to do it. And she really had to work hard to convince him of that. But that she even thought that, you know, trying to balance being a photo intern or wanting to become a photo intern and him declining that, she thought that that would make for good drama on the show, but he never wanted that. So eventually he did give in. He let her be a photo intern. She eventually upgraded to a Playmate editor. And her confidence grew now that she had responsibilities and she had a job and a creative outlet. She was like, I really enjoyed this. They were supposed to be seen, not heard. And now she was ready to kind of step into her own. Kind of like Kendra, she says. Kendra came into the house very confident, but half eventually started to chip away at that. He started talking about her overbite and he started talking about her weight, telling her she looked like she'd gained some weight and he really knew how to chop them down. He would build them up only to bring them back down. That way they always stayed in his safe zone. They always stayed in his bubble. So that way they would never leave him because they never thought they could. So that coupled with the reality though, or sorry, with the reality show though, only made the three girls closer. Because if Hef was going to tear them down and they had to do this show together, they eventually started to like form a much closer and deeper bond. And it started to feel less like the girls against each of each other and more of the girls against the world. Who runs the world? Girls. Who run this one? This girls. Who run the world? Girls. Um, did they get to ditch that stupid 9 p.m. curfew? No, they never got to ditch the 9 p.m. curfew. They always had to stick to the curfew, but it was a little more, but they didn't mind it because they got to have a little more freedom throughout the day. I enjoyed watching the girls' friendship. So apparently it didn't start very strong, but eventually by the third season, it really started to blossom into the friendship that we saw and came to appreciate because I guess they kind of had to force it uh, like they kind of had to push themselves to be in a solid, happy sort of like friendship and relationship. Right. Um, okay. What else guys, what else, what else, what else, any other thoughts or closing vibes before we wrap book club for the night? I was actually thoroughly entertained by these chapters. I, I'm fascinated by the Playboy Mansion. I'm also thinking Jacques from the Unpopular Podcast, who, who you guys know is a good friend of mine, he was he started to read the new Meghan Markle book, and I think that may actually be our next book club pick 
Um, I know there are 17 chapters in Holly's book. We just wrapped what chapter nine. So we've got another eight chapters to go. Maybe we break it up into four chapters and four chapters and we wrap book and book club in the next two weeks. I think we can do that. So three more weeks of Playboy. We'll have the next four chapters of Holly's book and then the last four chapters of Holly's book. And then instead of a book club recap, we'll recap the Playboy Mansion docuseries. So we have at least three weeks before we do that. So we have three weeks to watch the docuseries if you haven't done so yet. I'll recap that. And then I think we can move into the Meghan Markle book. It seems interesting. I'm actually kind of interested. Holly calling Hugh Puffin annoyed me. But again, she kind of had to condition herself and, and convince herself that she really was in love with him. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. I did say we would do Jeanette McCurdy's book next. Okay. I'm a liar. Sorry. We did agree. We're doing Jeanette McCurdy's book after Playboy. And then we can do Meghan Markle's book. I don't think Jeanette McCurdy's book is going to be that long. We'll try to breeze through that one. We'll try to keep that one to only like three weeks. And then we can dive right into the Meghan Markle book. Because from what I hear, Meghan Markle's book is super duper ju 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 juicy. Ju 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 juicy. It's Miss Juicy, baby. Heather McDonald had an interview with Holly and Bridget yesterday. I saw that and I was like, oh, they're doing interviews. But that's right. They're launching their new podcast, Girls Next Level. So I actually think I'm going to try to get them on this podcast on Hashtag New Filter with Zach Peter. The docuseries is intense. I know I've heard it's intense, Brandy, and I'm a little nervous about how intense it's going to be. But I will get through it, I promise. I'll see how many episodes it is and you know, we'll we'll get through it. Okay. I'm loving book club. Yay. I'm so glad people seem to like really be responding well to book club, which makes me so happy that you guys enjoy it and are watching it and supporting and all that good stuff. So there we go. Yes. I'd love to have them on your podcast. That's what I'm aiming for. Taro. I'm trying. I'm trying. Good. I want to see what kind of monster her mom was. Megan Mark. Oh, Jeanette McCurdy's mom. Yes. I mean, I was watching some of her inter interviews today and she says that her mom would do like medical like examinations on her up until she was like 17. Ooh. Okay, well, if the docuseries is 12 episodes long and we have three weeks, then that gives me four episodes a week. So every night I'll read, oh, sorry, every night over the next three weeks, I'll watch another episode of the documentary. That way I'm not binging it either and we kind of, you know, elongate it. But yes, Jeanette McCurdy's book sounds great. It's so fun. You're the greatest. Thank you, Pam. I appreciate that. This is the best book club since we don't have to read. I mean, yeah, that's, that makes it even better. I do all the work for you guys and I get to spill it and do story time. And I love doing story time. Um, it would be great to hear from the girls and see how their relationship is today. Well, you mean the girls next door, Holly, Bridget, and Kendra? Kendra's on the outs. Kendra doesn't talk to them. Holly and Kendra still don't like each other. They still don't get along. I think because Kendra came out with her book where she really praised half in the Playboy Mansion. And then Holly came out with her book and she was very, you know, didn't speak highly of half or the Playboy Mansion. And so... Kendra was upset that she shared all of these things because Kendra's like, that wasn't my experience. And how dare you not be grateful for half in the life that he afforded us, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, when you watch the Playboy documentary, watch it a little at a time. It's a lot to take in. Yeah, I think I'll do four episodes a week and I'll break them up and maybe, yeah, I don't want to watch more than one episode a night. So like every night I'll do maybe like Monday, Tuesday, Saturday, Sunday. I don't know. It depends on my week because obviously we're going to be watching Beverly Hills on Wednesdays and yeah. Okay. Any other thoughts? Closing vibes? Yes. You and Jacques doing revenge, but it's 43 chapters. Oh, you two would be brilliant. Oh my God. 42 chapters. That's a lot. Maybe we'll like try to, so instead of doing a chapter by chapter recap, maybe we kind of just do like a three part recap and I'll have Jacques on for all three parts and we'll just kind of recap the juice. We'll do part one, part two, and part three of the book and Jacques and I can chat about it, recap it, do the whole damn thing. Or we can make it four parts and I break down all three parts and then bring Jacques on for a fourth part where we kind of give our commentary and thoughts about it. Boom. Oh my God, you guys. I've been up since 5 a.m., 5.30. 
and I worked out. I worked, got ready for my Meredith Marks interview, which is airing tomorrow. Did book club. Now I have to get ready because I have to go tape my interview with Jenny McCarthy tonight. I still have to go tape that. It's a long day. What's today? Tuesday? It's a long Tuesday. And then tomorrow, Meredith Marks interview comes out and there's a whole bunch of work. Every time we have a big interview, those days are always busy too. Um, I'm addicted now. I'm addicted and I just can't find you love. What's that? I'm addicted and I just, I don't know the song. Okay. Good night, Lauren. Good night, Mary. Good night, Pam. Good night, Artis. Good night, Kenzie. How was the interview with Meredith? Okay, guys, the interview with Meredith Marks is really good. Um, we talked a lot about Jen Shaw. Oh, I was like, didn't you guys see the trailer? But the trailer hasn't come out yet. There is a teeny tiny little teaser that I posted on my personal Instagram story that you guys can see. But the actual, oh, I love her. Can I still submit a question for Jenny? Yes, now's the last chance because I have to go film with her in a couple hours. Good luck, Zach, and take care of yourself. Thank you, Marianne. I appreciate that. Um, but yes, the Meredith Marks interview drops first thing in the morning. If you're listening on the podcast, then it drops at midnight Eastern. Or if you're listening to, or sorry, midnight Pacific. So 3 a.m. Eastern, I believe. Um, which is on the podcast. So you'll get it in the middle of the night. Or if you're watching it on YouTube, it airs at 7 a.m. Pacific. It's on the YouTube channel ask about new, new kids on the block. What do you want to know about new kids on the block? Um, are you going out? No, I'm not going out tonight, but I do have to go film tonight because we're filming the podcast and I'm not doing it in Zoom. We're doing it in person, which I'm really excited about. Um, I'm addicted and I just can't get enough. Okay. But yes, Meredith Marks, I asked her about Jen. I was like, what was your reaction to Jen Shaw pleading guilty? You posted innocent until proven guilty on social media. Why did you post that? What were you thinking? Um, so we get into that and like where her head was at, what her reaction was, whether or not she's spoken to Jen since then. Definitely going to ask Jenny about uh, Playboy. I know people really want to know. So thank you, Sarah. Okay. Let's wrap. Good night, guys. Love you. Appreciate you. If you want to keep up with me, I'll probably post more like behind the scenes stuff on my personal Instagram story. So you can follow me at Just Plain Zach, or you can follow the podcast if you want all the latest reality TV dish at No Filter with Zach on the Instagram. If you're watching this on YouTube before you leave, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button if you aren't subscribed yet. And if you want to make sure you're always caught up to date with book club or any of the latest tea that's built, be sure to hit the bell button. That way you always get the tea fresh up in those notifications. Oh, All right, guys. Have a wonderful night. Hopefully you stock up on some No Filter wines. So you can get Lady City this weekend. I love you. I appreciate you. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye, 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 bye.